welcome to News Tonight on Rajya Sabha TV. I am Ashwarya Kapoor. Today we will be discussing about a great reconciliation between two politically divergent ideologies as Mufti Mohammed Saeed was today sworn in as uh, Chief Minister of uh, Jammu and Kashmir along with the Deputy Chief Minister Nirmal Singh and 23 other ministers from both the BDP. PDP and the BJP. We'll also be talking about Prime Minister Narendra Modi's address at the Silver Jubilee celebration of NASCOM. But first up, the headlines. Mufti Mohammed Said sworn in as Jammu and Kashmir Chief Minister to head a historic PDP BJP coalition government in the state. The two parties announced common minimum program to overcome contentious issues. Government reasserts resolve to see passage of land ordinance in Parliament. The five other ordinances are also to be tabled in the House tomorrow. Massive tributes to slain Russian opposition leader Boris Nemstov in Moscow as thousands gather for a march in his honour. Nemstov's allies call it a political killing linked to President Putin. And at the ICC World Cup, Sri Lanka thrashed England and Pakistan beat Zimbabwe. The top story, a historic PDP-BJP alliance uh, government is in place in Jammu and Kashmir nearly three months after assembly elections results were announced in the state. Veteran People's Democratic Party leader Mufti Mohammed Zay that took oath as Jammu and Kashmir chief minister this morning. The two parties with sharply differing uh, ideologies claim that they have built strong enough bridges. Take a look. I, I Mufti Mohammed Zay. Do severe in the name of God that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of India. The beginning of a new political innings for the 79 year old former Indian Home Minister, Mufti Mohammad Said, took oath with 25 ministers of the PDP and BJP. The BJP's Nirmal Singh will be the deputy CM. Prime Minister Modi and a number of BJP veterans attended. Hammering out the vast differences has been a focus for both parties over the last 49 days of governor's rule in the state. Chief Minister Saeed accepting the alliance as an art of the possible despite contradictions said challenges ahead demanded an end to differences. I don't want to criticize anybody. I want to look to future. Hum kya karenge? Agar Jammu Kashmir ko model of development banana hai, जैसे गुजरात पर करते हैं जो हमारे लोग अच्छा है नमूने की हुकूमत है गुड गवर्नेंस उसके लिए मुफ्ती मोहम्मद सईद को अलाइंस को पीस इज प्री रिक्विजिट पहले पीस मिलना चाहिए हम इतिहास को बदलना चाहते हैं वी वांट टू मेक दिस अलाइंस ए टर्निंग पॉइंट इन trying to meet hearts and minds of people. It celebrations for both parties, at least for now, amid claims that they have found a way out of the ideological impasses like Article 370 and the Armed Forces Special Powers Act. But there's no missing the depth of the contradictions. Former Chief Minister Omar Abdullah took pot shots, saying the new BJP ministers swore allegiance to the same state constitution their ideologue died fighting. The opposition dismissed the new government as little more than an opportunistic alliance. You know, it is complete opportunism at display. It clearly shows that uh, the people of this country should not trust anything which the BJP says, whether it is Article 370 or the Uniform Civil Code or uh, the Ram Mandir. Uh, when it comes to power, they are prepared to sacrifice everything on the altar of pelf and power. Who will run the government and uh, who will destroy state, central nation? I think this combination, Modi and Mufti, shall prove a great threat to the integrity of the country and to the state central relations jin cheezon ka dr shama prasad mukherjee ne apne jeevan kaal mein virodh kiya tha jo bhartiya janasangh ki buniyad thi aaj un savare sawalon par aatm samarpan karke bhajpa ne dr mukherjee ke vichar ko alvida keh diya 
Getting over political hurdles that will emerge frequently will be a tough task as the new dispensation gets down to the much needed governance issues. The BJP finally has a say in power in Jammu and Kashmir, a massive landmark, but how far it can push its own agenda remains to be seen. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha Television. Well, the new chief minister offered a glimpse of the coalition government's stand on key issues soon after he and his 25-member cabinet took oath in Jammu today. The BJP and PDP had uh, diametrically opposite views on many issues and the common minimum program is an effort to bridge that divide. Take a look. Talks have been on between the two sides for the last two months. They have evolved a common minimum program looking to build a bridge on contentious issues which is to work as a roadmap for governing the state. हमने एक दूसरे की जो सेंसिटिविटीज हैं जो स्टैंड है उसको रिस्पेक्ट करते हुए जिस प्रकार का मैंडेट है हमने उस प्रकार का जो है कॉमन मिनिमम प्रोग्राम बनाया है और सरकार अच्छी चलाने का संकल्प भी है द टू पार्टीज हैड अ जॉइंट प्रेस कॉन्फ्रेंस लेटर इन द डे टू रिलीज द कॉमन मिनिमम प्रोग्राम हियर आर द हाइलाइट्स ऑन द आर्म्ड फोर्सेस स्पेशल पावर्स एक्ट द कोलिशन विल थरोली रिव्यू द सिक्योरिटी सिचुएशन इन द स्टेट टू एग्जामिन द नीड एंड डिजायरेबिलिटी ऑफ ऑल द स्पेशल लॉज बीइंग अप्लाइड On Article 370, the present position will be maintained on all the constitutional provisions, including special status. Another contentious issue is dialogue with the separatists. The coalition is to facilitate and initiate sustained dialogue with all internal stakeholders, irrespective of their ideological views and leanings. On the peace process with Pakistan, the coalition government will be empowered to catalyze reconciliation and confidence building within and across the line of control. thereby ensuring peace in the state then the refugees from west pakistan the government will take measures for their sustenance and livelihood a one time settlement will be worked out for refugees from pok the new jammu and kashmir cabinet will meet for the first time on monday bureau report rajya sabha tv all right uh, for putting the things in perspective we have with us senior journalist mr rahul jalali uh, mr jalali thank you so much uh, for joining in uh, today mr jalali now we are seeing the historic pdp bjp government in the state of jammu and kashmir for the first time and uh, the chief minister the new chief minister has said uh, that this is going to be a turning point in the state's history uh, how do you look at it well i think it's a very important event and what the new chief minister has said mr mufti mohammed said that is going to be a turning point i hope he is true uh, he proved he's proved right about this factor because the people of jammu and kashmir and ladakh if i might add that have been suffering for a long long time suffering from lack of employment suffering from terrorism suffering basically from also if you remember you know last november there was this massive flood which affected jammu and the entire valley of kashmir uh, many people are still uh living in tents in both these regions they'd have their they don't have their homes there's been no government in place in the state for the last two and a half months ever since ever since omar abdullah left uh so they need some kind of succor apart from that i think the other important template be before this alliance is that um i would look at it from two different angles one there is a promise for peace peace both internally as well as uh, across the loc as you know was mentioned in the common minimum program yes plus uh, a progress uh, uh, agenda too a progress agenda which uh, mr mufti mohammed said the chief minister spoke in his press conference that his basic priority would be to bring succor mm. for the suffering masses of his state but that apart one essential ingredient in this alliance apart from what you stated yes. that the, for the first time bjp is a part of the government the other major factor is that this is the first time that both regions jammu and ladakh have a major say in this cabinet formation if you look at it traditionally jammu has always said that the cabinet has been dominated by kashmir True. this is one time when there is equal representation of both the regions of the state and ladakh where bjp and pdp did not win anything also finds representation in the cabinet right so there has been a distribution point. 
Right. This is a very interesting point you've made about uh, the cabinet, Mr. Jalali. Uh, of course, we have PDP members, we have BJP, we also have sa people like Sajid Lone in this cabinet. So the question is, will we hear one common voice from this cabinet or will there will be varying well, I, voices? Well, I think with an astute politician and leader like Mufti Mohammed Said heading this cabinet, hmm. I'm pretty sure there will be one common voice which you could see reflected by the very fact that in the press conference, yes. both Mr. Mufti Mohammed Said and the Deputy Chief Minister, uh, Mr. Nirmal Singh, Professor Nirmal Singh sat together. Incidentally, let me remind you that one is a legal uh, a lawyer, that's Mr. S uh, Said, and uh, Professor uh, Nirmal Singh is a historian. He was uh, head of the Department of History of Jammu University. So there is a certain intellectual rigor which this alliance bring reflected by the status of the two leaders who are uh, who are in position. You mentioned Sajjad Loon. That's an important entry because let's not forget when we talk of peace in the valley, Sajjad Loon till yesterday was treated as a separatist who's fought elections and now is a part of a government. Exactly. This is a big message which should go to the other separatists in the valley that if they join the mainstream, well, you know what what can happen. Sajjad Loon is a good example. Right, uh, Mr. Jalali, you stay with us. Uh, we'll just come back to you for another story. Meanwhile, a day after the government presented its uh, first full budget, the Prime Minister today attended the Silver Jubilee celebrations of Software Services Association body, NASCOM. With Communications uh, Minister Ravi Shankar Prasad, the two commended the work of the country's software industry in leaving a lasting imprint on global markets. Policy framework. An event celebrating 25 glorious years of the National Association of Software and Services Companies, NASCOM. Prime Minister Narendra Modi, Communications and Information Technology Minister Ravi Shankar Prasad and Jayant Senha, Minister of State for Finance, were present at the function commending NASCOM's journey. Prime Minister Modi said the industrial body has been monumental in transforming India's image globally and empowering the Indian people. नेस्कॉम के इस नेटवर्क के माध्यम से लाखों नौजवानों को रोजगार मिला उनको अवसर मिले देश की इकोनॉमी को लाभ हुआ भारत को आधुनिक बनाने की दिशा में कुछ कदम हम भी चले लेकिन इन सब से भी अलग एक बात जो मुझे हमेशा लगती है इस आईटी के कारण पूरी दुनिया को भारत की तरफ देखने का रवैया बदलना पड़ा प्रसाद ऑल्सो रिकॉल द मैसिव हर्डल्स दैट नेस्कॉम हैज ओवरकम टू पोर्ट्रे द इंडियन मार्केट इन अ कॉम्पिटिटिव एंड क्वालिटेटिव लाइट टू द वर्ल्ड ही सेड द बॉडी हैज हाइलाइटेड द कंट्रीज इंटेलेक्चुअल एंड एंटरप्रेन्योरियल स्किल्स आउटस्टैंडिंगली कैन यू इंडियन गिव अ क्वालिटी प्रोडक्ट कैन यू इंडियन गिव अ प्रोडक्ट इन टाइम कैन यू इंडियन कंपीट दीस थ्री where the recurring walls you had to face everywhere in the world but today when we reflect when we introspect we see not only you conquered but from that process emerged certain new icons of india who are deeply respected and have become a role model nascom chairman r chandrashekharan infosys founder nr narayan murthy and wipro chairman azim premji were among the other top industrialists present NASCOM will also host a discussion with Ravi Shankar Prasad and Jayant Sinha talking to industry leaders on the union budget 2015 and the opportunities for the Indian IT BPO industry. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha Television. All right, let's go back uh, to Mr. Rahul Jalali. Mr. Jalali, now encouraging words there we uh, saw from Prime Minister Narendra Modi. He has in fact also spoken about how IT can be a major factor in increasing the GDP of the country. But uh, how do you look at the, the, the statements considering the fact that there are some uh, skepticism also about whether the IT of our country is beyond its uh, past? No, 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 no. I don't uh, agree with that. I think... Um, the uh, uh, um, IT industry in our country is really at the forefront of technology in the world. I mean, let's make no bones about it. They are growing, they are expanding, and they are at the cutting edge of research. And this is the only industry we can boast of. Uh, and the achievement, uh, Indian 
telecommunication, whether you take the entire IT spectrum, I, Mr. Ravi Shankar Prasad was speaking there and one of the pet themes of his today is how to take BPOs from major urban centers to smaller urban centers. Mm -hmm. He's got this whole scheme lined up, which I pro probably believe he'll announce very shortly, of how through BPOs or rather the IT industry, you can create employment opportunities for the young in small towns. So look at what IT is doing. It has transformed the face of India to a large extent and it is now going to move into smaller areas of India, uh, India which it has. Look at the mobile penetration. I mean, you I have no memory. I don't think you will. But I belong to a generation where we did not have mobile phones. Uh, I belong to a generation as a journalist where conveying a story from one uh, place to another. I remembered I covered Bhopal. Uh, the, the tragedy in Bhopal. Now, at that time, sending my story from Bhopal to my headquarters in Delhi, yes. it took me greater time to s send it through a teleprinter uh, than get getting the story itself. Right. Today, look at the way technology has changed it. Mm -hmm. The concentration, the penetration of mobile network within the country. We have totally changed. Look at what IT has done to our country, agriculture, right. you name it. Mm -hmm. So, I think NASCOM, we should celebrate what they are doing. Right. And we are at the forefront of technology worldwide. And this is the only industry, mark you, in, mm -hmm. this is the only industry we can boast of internationally. All right. So I think that's a big achievement. All right, that's a big achievement. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Jalali, for sharing uh, your perspective on that story. Thank you so much. All right, so let's move on in the bulletin now. Parliamentary Affairs Minister Venkaiya Naidu today reasserted the government's resolve to see the passage of the land ordinance in the parliament. The ordinance will be taken up along with five others uh, in parliament tomorrow. Venkaiya Naidu said that the NDA government is open to considering meaningful suggestions from opposition on the matter. He said the bill will greatly benefit the farmers and the government is committed for their welfare. The government claims it is going the extra mile and not declining the compensation for farmers but in fact enhancing it four times. Parliament uh, will be taking up uh, the six ordinances to convert them into bills in the coming days. And as for the land acquisition ordinance is concerned, the government is committed to this ordinance. But if any meaningful suggestions come, definitely they will be considered. And we are there to protect the interests of the farmers. And in other news, with 36 more deaths in the last 24 hours, the toll due to swine flu in the country has reached 1,041. The number of people affected by the H1N1 virus stands at 19,046 in the first two months this year. With rainy conditions uh, prevailing in many parts of the country, there is a possibility of steep rise in numbers. Rajasthan with the 234 and Gujarat with the 231 deaths have been the worst hit states. Madhya Pradesh with 151 reported deaths and Maharashtra with 131 deaths are badly hit as well. In Delhi, 10 people have died of swine flu while the number of affected has risen to 2,791. Health Minister J.P. Nada had admitted uh, that the country was indeed facing a shortage of laboratories for testing swine flu and had assured that efforts were being made to set up such facilities in all the states of the country. And some more news from across the nation in our special segment, Nationwide. Bihar Chief Minister Nitish Kumar held a conclave of JDU party workers in Patna today, the first show of strength and support after Jeetan Ram Manji quit and he was sworn in. He addressed more than a lakh workers and asked them to apologize to the people of Bihar. In a veiled attack on former Chief Minister Jeetan Ram Manji as well as the center, Nitish spoke of rewriting Bihar's development story after the political chaos of the months of Manji's rule. Jammu and Kashmir police today busted a massive drug and fake currency racket in the state. Police recovered a 126,000 rupees worth of fake currency and 1,100 grams of heroin from arrested persons. Police uh, have arrested uh, six people so far and are on the lookout for four others. The two-day winter carnival began in Jammu and Kashmir today. The carnival is being held at uh, the snow-covered Patni Top area in Kashmir's Udhampur district. A number of uh, snow sports like uh, skiing, sledging, tug-of-war and snowman building are on offer for tourists at the carnival. 
All right, in uh, news tonight, we'll take a very short break, uh, but still to come, Foreign Secretary S.J. Shankar leaves for tour of Sark Nations. He will be in Pakistan on Tuesday. That and much more after a short break. Tradition dating back centuries. A cultural heritage that inspires and warms at once. Magic that awes, Rajya Sabha Television brings you events that embrace the wonders of India's classical arts. Conversations with the biggest names in the culture and music. Rajya Sabha Television, Democracy at Work. Welcome back. After the break, let's move on in the bulletin. Foreign Secretary S. J. Shankar today called on a Bhutanese Prime Minister sharing a top gay soon after arriving in Thimpu on his first leg of his Sark Yatra. J. Shankar's Bhutan visit will be followed by Bangladesh on 2nd of March, Pakistan on 3rd of March and Afghanistan on 4th of March. J. Shankar will travel to Pakistan seven months after India cancelled Foreign Secretary level talks. During the visit to the Sark capitals, Jay Shankar will review various initiatives for the region, including Sark satellites and regional universities, as proposed by Prime Minister Narendra Modi during his visit to Nepal for Sark summit last year. And on to some international news, and massive crowds turned out in Moscow on Sunday after a march in honor of slain Kremlin critic Boris Nemstov. The opposition politician was supposed to appear at a Sunday rally protesting Russia's role in fighting the Ukraine, but the rally was converted into a memorial march after, the Nems after Nemstov uh, was gunned down late Friday on a street just steps from Kremlin. Here is a report. Tens of thousands of people marching in streets of Moscow to honor opposition politician Boris Nemstov, who was shot dead on Friday. His supporters at the bridge near the Kremlin, the spot where the former deputy prime minister was gunned down. And of course it's absolutely preposterous that, uh, that uh, a politician is being killed and uh, opposition politician is being killed in the center of the city next to the Kremlin. I mean, this is something something absolutely unbearable and, and uh, impossible. Investigations are on into the killing that President Vladimir Putin has promised to take under personal control. Putin condemned Nemstov's murder as vile and cynical. However, Nemstov's allies have called it a political killing linked to his opposition to Putin and the Ukraine conflict. UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon condemned the murder. Nemstov's killing came a few hours after a radio interview in which he called upon Moscow residents to join the opposition's protest rally on Sunday and criticized what he called Putin's aggressive and deadly policy of war against Ukraine. Bureau report Rajya Sabha TV. And on to cricket now. Well, Sri Lanka handed England their third crushing defeat of the World Cup, winning comfortably by nine wickets in a Pool A game at Wellington. In the Pool B match, Pakistan got their first win of the World Cup, beating Zimbabwe by 20 runs. England came into the match under pressure with just one win from three games. They started off well with a 62 run first wicket partnership. But it was Joe Root's century and some late par hitting by Joe Butler that propelled England to 309 for 6, their highest total of the tournament. <laughs> Sri Lanka started the chase on a positive note with a 100 run first wicket partnership between Thirumane and Tilakratne Dilshan. Kumar Sangakara then joined Thirumane as both batsmen went on to make centuries in a 212 run second wicket partnership. The pair comfortably sealed the victory with 16 balls remaining. We were 
uh, went down when things started. Uh, but we came back really hard. Uh, but that's not in the, the end. We have to play against Australia in the next match. So we want to give our 100% and win that match also. So. In the second match, Pakistan were looking for the first win of the World Cup. Batting first, they started off poorly, losing first two wickets for just four runs. Captain Ms. Baul Huck scored a steady 73 as wickets stumbled at the other end. Wahab Riaz made a quick fire 54 in the end to push the total to 235 for 7. Zimbabwe lost a few early wickets but kept themselves in the chase with Brendan Taylor and Sean Williams combining for a 56 run fourth wicket partnership. But after losing Williams at the score of 150, Zimbabwe lost their way and fell 20 runs short of their target. Mohammad Irfan took four wickets for Pakistan. Bureau Report, Raj Sabha TV. And let's have a look at the points tally after today's uh, matches. Uh, well, talking about uh, Pool A first, New Zealand top Pool A with four wins from four games. Sri Lanka are at the second place with six points after today's win. Bangladesh and Australia are next with three points each. England are at sixth place with only one win from four games. Talking about uh, Pool B, well in Pool B, India are at the top with six points followed by South Africa, West Indies and Ireland with the four points each. Pakistan move up from their bottom uh, with the first win of the tournament today. And finally, it is just uh, five days to Holi. In Delhi, the festival emerges only on those couple of days. But in many parts of Uttar Pradesh and Bihar, festivities are well underway. So we leave you with the colors of Holi in Ayodhya. Good night.